Was Calvin really the great exegete? Calvin's arguments reflect a bias in favor of the sacramentalism he learned as a Roman Catholic from Augustine, which he elaborated upon and thereafter was compelled to defend. His logic often betrays a spiritual immaturity. Incredibly, Calvin argued, Such in the present day are our Cato Baptists, who deny that we are duly baptized because we were baptized in the papacy by wicked men and idolaters. Against these absurdities we shall be sufficiently fortified if we reflect that by baptism we were initiated into the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and therefore that baptism is not of man but of God, by whomsoever it may have been administered if clergy. Be it that those who baptized us were most ignorant of God and all piety, or were despisers, still they did not baptize us into their ignorance or sacrilege, but into the faith of Jesus Christ, because the name they invoked was not their own, but God's. But if baptism were of God, it certainly included in it the promise of forgiveness of sin, mortification of the flesh, quickening of the Spirit, and communion with Christ. In Calvinism, the physical act of baptism has spiritual power and imparts regeneration. To be baptized by Roman Catholic priests who were not even Christians, but promoted a false gospel, was acceptable to Calvin because they used the name of God when they administered it. Even to be baptized by despisers of Christ and God would bring the promise of forgiveness of sin, so long as they were part of the ministerial office. Incredibly, though a major figure in the Protestant Reformation, Calvin honored Rome's corrupt and unsaved priests as God's ministers. Yet he condemned and persecuted those who came out of that antichrist system through faith in Christ, for being subsequently baptized as believers according to God's holy word. Calvin taught that only the clergy, whether Roman Catholic or Protestant, could baptize or administer the Lord's Supper. It is improper for private individuals to take upon themselves the administration of baptism. For it, as well as the dispensation of the Supper, is part of the ministerial office. For Christ did not give command to any man or woman whatever to baptize but to those he had appointed apostles. Thus, Calvin also accepted Rome's claim that her bishops were successors of the twelve apostles, and from them her priests received divine authority. And he was a leader of the Reformation? Contrary to what Calvin taught about an exclusive ministerial office, Our Lord Jesus Christ clearly commanded the original disciples to make disciples and to teach every disciple they won to him through the gospel to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Matthew chapter 28 verse 20.